histogram below shows the distribution of height to the nearest inch of 1,000 young women. So, number one, what does the width of each bar represent? What does the height of each bar represent? So, the width of each bar would be what? But what does it mean that it's one bar? Yeah. It's that inch of height, right? So the width of the bar is one inch of height. Okay? For these one thousand young women. Now, what does the height of each bar represent? What does it represent? The height of each bar. Okay, but so for example, uh, a 60 inch tall woman, what does that represent? say the typical height is 2.75 inches away away from the mean. That's what the standard deviation tells us. That's what the mean tells us. Okay? So if their height is 64.6 inches, we can go below that 2.75 inches and to the right of that 2.75 inches. Behind Josh. Okay? So, that's where, remember when we talked about yesterday, that empirical rule, about 68% of your value should fall within 2.75 below the mean and 2.75 above the mean. I think we're going to that too right here. All right, page three. It says, mark the mean on the graph 
and mark one deviation above and below the mean. Approximately what portion of the values in this data set are within one standard deviation? So that's exactly what we're talking about. So let's go back to page one where we have our chart. And it says to mark the mean, which was 64.6, correct? So if we mark the mean, it's going to look something like this. Here's the mean. Now what's the standard deviation? Well, 64.6 minus 2.75 and 64.6 plus 2.75. What does that give us? Five, three, seven, six, and what does it give us? We subtract it. Six. So the standard deviation, one standard deviation below, one standard deviation above the mean. Okay. So let's mark those. Sixty-one point eight. So I did nearly, and look, remember what we talked about, where does it fall off at? Okay. Okay, so there is your standard deviation, one standard deviation, and one standard deviation. Now it says to find out what, what is the approximate proportionality in between that. So what would you do? How would you find the probability or the percentages of that? No, we don't have to do that. We're trying to figure out how much falls in between those standard deviations. How many values fall in between those? How can we find that? Since this is a histogram of relative frequencies, all we have to do is add up the values over here that correspond with the graph. Okay? So we would just go straight across from these values, whatever these are, is what the proportion in between those. Okay? So, from, let's do this though, let's round it to 62, let's round this to 67, that way it's a little bit easier to know. Alright, so 62 was, one tenth, and, what is that, you want to be exact? 12? For 63? Or was that 13? 13? Yeah, 12. Okay, 13. And what about for 64 is going to be 14. So this would be 13. And how far do we go? 67 is. So if we add that up, two, four, that's zero, and one, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you have more than one? On yeah, I do. So let's just, let's call it, let's go ahead and go down to 61 here and see what that gives us. Zero, zero point zero six. So that's right at sixty six percent, which is what we said, right? Between one standard deviation, between the one standard deviation, there should be about sixty eight percent. Okay. And. Actually, I didn't do that right, did I? Now that I look at that, this standard, this is on 67. This should actually be 67.3. I think that, that should be over here, shouldn't it? 
part of it's more than 67 but it's not all of 68 so we could actually add that one too and that one would give us what's that 0.7 so 73 percent and that's still about the same thing right 68 percent whether you're talking about 66 or 73 it's pretty close to being about the same and that's what it tells you with standard D or with the empirical rule or normal distribution okay so we can say on page three we'll call it 66 percent to about 73 percent so if you gave me anything in between there i would say okay yeah that's about right all right so draw for number four it says draw a smooth curve it comes reasonably close to passing through the midpoint of the top of the bar on the histogram describe the shape okay well i think you can all tell That's going to be normally distributed, right? If we describe that shape, that is normally distributed. And we would call that the bell or the mound shape. All right, page four, number five says, shade the area of the histogram that represents the proportion of heights that are within one standard deviation of the mean. Well, since we have already drawn that, now all we have to do, let's find another color to make it pretty. Okay. And we will just shade this in. Page one, yeah. We gotta shade in the graph. Questions on that? You may not know how we found what we just found. 